Duke sissed Wits' office. The demon Earl Sillock was standing in front of it with an anxious heart. It was because the Earl, Han, was guarding the office like a gatekeeper. Han. No one knew what his real name was. Everyone just called him Han. He was an Earl like Sillock, but he was a very unusual fellow. It was because he kept in touch with Asmodeus, a demon king of 32 demon realms. Maybe Duke Siswitz kept him around because he was aware of this fact. Sillock felt inwardly strained and finally opened his mouth. I have something to say to the Duke. Tell me, I will let him know. It is difficult. The Duke is currently in an emergency meeting with the Gilbat envoy. When will it finish? I don't know. Sillock clicked his tongue. If he told this guy, Han would clearly take all the credit. Thus, Sillock replied, It's fine. It isn't urgent, so I'll wait. Han's eyebrows twitched at the words. Sillock liked seeing this expression. Son of a bitch, keep wondering. The information that Sillock reported was simple. A civilian presumed to be a Marquis of Gilibet has appeared in public. Of course, it wasn't bad to say this, but the more he thought about it, the stranger things seemed. Sillock thought for a moment before staring closely at the Duke's office. Is a Marquis from Gilibet inside of there? Yes. He must have come straight here without going anywhere else. That is the case. Sillock felt delighted at the reply. Indeed, my guess is correct. He didn't know for certain, but there shouldn't be two Marquis in the Gilibat delegation. A Marquis grade should be likely be the leader of the delegation. It was very likely that the citizen he met wasn't a Marquis of Gilibat and was pretending to be a demon noble. This alone was worth reporting. It might not be big, but it would help with his performance review. Han saw the hesitating Sillock and opened his mouth. Since you are wandering around, you will also be wondering who the next demon king will be. Uh, well, that's right. It was a misunderstanding, but it wasn't a bad idea to ask about the misunderstanding. Is it because of the rumors of the demon king emerging that the Gilabat delegation came to visit? I can't tell you more, but it is similar. The story of the demon king it is a bit funny, don't you think so? The source of the rumors was unknown, yet these rumors shook the entire 73rd demon realm. Sillock inwardly found this situation laughable. Sistwitz, Gilabat, Melodon, Birkin. For the last few hundred years, the 73rd demon realm had been properly balanced by these four dukes. The peace that had been maintained for hundreds of years was now shaking because of a rumor. It was a story without any realism. However, Han didn't agree with Sillock's words. The signs of the Demon King are already appearing. What? How do you know that? I heard that Vadis has joined hands with the Melodon Industrial Complex. Vadis? It was a word that Sillock was familiar with. No, it would be strange if he didn't know it. It was one of the names that must be known in order to safely live in the Starstream. Thus, Sillock couldn't help feeling astonished. The nebula are moving directly. To be precise, one of the narrative-grade constellations from Vedas has been in contact with Melodon. The constellations in Demon King's enmity was famous in the Starstream. Now the constellations were interfering with the affairs of the 73rd Demon Realm. The scale wasn't big, but things would spiral out of control if it really was a nebula. The nebula are interested. Does this mean the demon king will really appear? Silak muttered with a slightly dazed expression. This was a demon king. Silak had been living in the demon realm for a long time, and it didn't really sink in. However, at least one thing was known. This is why the duke is so busy. He's currently the closest person to becoming the demon king. It was clear that one of the demon nobles would become the demon king. Look at the cases of the other 72 demon kings. It was extremely rare for a non-demonic existence to ascend to the throne. Then there was a light warning sound from the factory and message came up. 
a new main scenario has opened. The 24th revolutionary game has begun. Silak was startled by the sudden message, but he pretended to be calm when he saw Han's surprise expression. Han asked first, What is this message about? Oh, you don't know since you're new here. This sometimes happens. It is the main scenario here. The revolutionary game. The revolutionary game. He was probably caught by the executioner while hiding. He's an unlucky person. The revolutionary game starting meant that the hidden revolutionary had appeared. However, there couldn't be a revolutionary in this industrial complex. Everyone clearly remembered what had happened when the last revolutionary appeared 30 years ago. Silux smiled and added, Don't worry, it isn't a big deal. Wait a bit and the executioner will take his neck. It will be a fun spectacle. Still, no matter how long he waited, the message announcing the end of the game wasn't heard. He was just thinking that something was wrong when a, a low-grade noble appeared. Siluk immediately recognized who it was. It was because he was one of the hidden executioners. He rushed towards the office, and Siluk asked first, What's going on? Someone has declared that they are a revolutionary. Siluk knew it was a stupid question, but he couldn't help wondering. What? Who? It's a new revolutionary. Then what is his name? The low-grade noble stuttered out a name. It was a name Silok didn't know. Unexpected, the bored-looking Han opened his mouth. Wait, what did you just say? Yes, it was definitely Yu Jun Kyuk. He called himself Yu Jun Kyuk? Silok hurriedly asked, Do you know him? I know. Han's expression shone brightly, but it was a somewhat warped smile. Even the demon Silok felt creeped out. Han asked, where did he show up? Night ended and I was called back to Eileen. To be exact, I was almost dragged back. The streets were almost completely turned upside down because of my declaration. A new revolutionary has appeared. The streets were loud with these words. If Eileen hadn't popped up and dragged me away, I would still be sandwiched between the citizens. As Eileen was unable to control her emotions, I checked the information of the hidden scenario with a nonchalant mind. Hidden scenario, fake revolutionary. Category, hidden. Difficulty level, SS. Clear conditions, you have become a self-proclaimed revolutionary by impersonating a revolutionary. Kill a real revolutionary within the given time and take their position. Otherwise, it will be a terrible ending. Time limit, 30 days. Compensation, 150,000 coins, entering a new main scenario. Failure, death. I roughly knew how to get the main scenario. In any case, I had to find the main, the real revolutionary. I glanced at Eileen and said, Then let's get started. Are you crazy? Eileen asked with an absurd expression. Do you know what you are doing? A revolution. What revolution without a revolutionary? You're a fake. Really? There's no way. Don't tell me. She had a cute expression on her face. I shrugged lightly, and Eileen's face filled with despair. Of course not. What the hell are you doing? Now it's all over. I shamelessly replied. This is what you wanted. A revolution and the death of the Duke. I didn't want it this way. This is a scam. How is a real revolution a scam? I will make it real. A revolution isn't such a joke. I agree with you. I didn't declare that I'm a revolutionary lightly. I agree that this industrial complex should be liberated. The fact that you can say it so easily is proof that your will is light. Eileen's voice contained deep rage. Do you intend to do the revolution alone? I've seen many revolutions in this industrial complex. How many revolutions have failed and how much blood has been shed and don't regard past failures as scriptures. There will be no change if you don't do anything. 
It's a scenario you can't do in the first place. I understood Eileen's feelings. In fact, the revolutionary scenario was a famous one in the industrial complex. The only rebellion protocol allowed by the scenario. Even so, the citizens of the industrial complex abandoned this game a long time ago. It was because there was no chance of winning. Thanks to this, the scenario lost its value as a scenario. Eileen continued. This is why I've been relying on exiles. The Duke can never be killed using existing scenarios. There's no way to win against the damn executioners, let alone the Duke. The scenario was made to be broken. There's a way to clear it if we look carefully. People are going to die because of you. I won't let that happen. Then you'll be the first to die. I won't die. I didn't die before. This, Eileen bit her lips. That was just luck. Do you think the Guardian will protect you again? Well, I think they will protect me. You don't know, but the Guardian will exhaust their vitality after using their protection. Every time they use it, they lose vitality and will eventually die. No one will protect you two or three times. The first time is the most important. Eileen, you know this place better than me, but you don't understand the people here. Eileen was about to say something, only to tightly close her lips for the first time. Perhaps Eileen had also felt something. The Hidden Guardian had appeared and protected me, a revolutionary. It was probably a sight that Eileen hadn't seen for a long time. It was a really long time. Eileen licked her lips for a long time before speaking in a small voice. Do you really think it's possible? It is possible. Haven't you seen enough of my skills? It would be possible. I would make the impossible possible. Eileen replied with a sigh. You aren't a real revolutionary. That's why I need your help. Eileen's expression shook at my words. Let's make a revolution without a revolutionary. Eileen made a decision and replied, You have to collect the positions. This is a game that you can't win alone. I guess so. A guardian is the minimum condition for survival. You also need a fighter to deal with the executioner and a spy to find the hidden executioners. Collect them one by one. Those positions won't be as far away as you think. I didn't fret. The revolutionary declaration was already ringing, so those in charge of their positions would realize it one by one. They would have to figure out what side to take in this damn game. I think one position has already been collected. As soon as I spoke, the door of the meeting room opened with a bang. Zheng Haiyang was looking this way with wide eyes. That... Eileen... Uh, uh, what? Someone is asking to enter. I'm busy right now. Send them away. That... It's a bit... Why? A person claiming to be the guardian has come. The surprised Eileen rose from her seat. Then behind Zheng Haiyang, a middle-aged man with a sturdy build appeared. You. Are you really the revolutionary? Surprisingly, it was a face I already knew.